Tina, how are you? I'm good, Nikki. How are you? I'm wonderful. It's a pleasure to meet you and congrats on the Hunger Games, the Ballad of Songbirds and Snape. Um, I have to first, oh, I have to first show you our little nostalgia here. Uh, Glitter featured uh, Isabel Furman from 2012. Oh, that's <laughs> a blast from the past. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when I heard about the prequel, I'm like, you know, who do we have on cover so long ago? So it was really nice to see that. Um, so, yeah, so I have to first start out by saying that the prequel is, it's amazing. Um, it was outstanding on all levels from storytelling and production, but I have to jump into Rachel Zegler because I mean, this was like sensory overload from the music, the locations, um, you know, what went into creating uh, Lucy Graybird? Uh, well, you know, what was, you know, uh, what was exciting about trying to bring a character like Lucy Gray to the screen is, you know, the complexity of her as a character. She is, you know, Suzanne was always like, you know, we work together very closely and Suzanne will have like kind of the core principles, the things that you know you have to always hold on to throughout the process. And as a producer who's been blessed to have her entrust these books to me, I always try to really keep, I always have like a dog-eared copy of the book right there with me on set. And I always try to keep those central ideas like at the top of mind and so with Lucy Gray you know the idea she is not just a songbird and he's the snake they are both songbird and snake um, and of course you see visually she is very comfortable with snakes it's a big part of who she is it's part of her how we meet her um, and so we needed on a uh, you know, a young actor could bring, on the one hand, that level of sophistication, the nuance, the subtlety, but then they also have to have this, like, astounding voice, a person who you believe, as a performer, knows how to, like, you know, hold a crowd, you know, in the palm of her hand. And I love, you know, when you see an incredible performer that way that you feel like they're just singing to you, they're playing to you, you're the only person in the room. And I love the dynamic between them where, you know, um, I think that that Snow is always wondering, you know, as runs through all these books, real or not real? Um, is this truly, you know, can I trust her or can I not? I think she asked those questions as well. But in Rachel, you know, she was the first person who Frances met with. Um, but she was doing Snow White. She felt that she couldn't go back to back to back and go straight into another production so far from home. And so we had to imagine doing it without her. But then ultimately, after we cast Josh, we got an unexpected call back from her agent saying, is it too late? You've just cast her boyfriend. Now he'll be gone. And she wants you to consider her again. Um, so then we put her and Tom together, and again, the chemistry had to be there. We already had found Tom by that point. But then there's also, I really appreciate how much, um, you know, Trish Somerville's design um, of the wardrobe makes up who Lucy Gray is. I mean, it's truly an incredible, like, display of artistry from Dave Cobb's music, certainly Rachel's voice and abilities, but, and this costume, you know, I. A wardrobe, I laughed at one point, you know, Trish said to me, like, you know, when I read the book and it says it's a ruffly rainbow dress, you know, a lot of really scary things go running through your head as, as a costume designer. And so this idea of this dress as being passed down from her mother, being emblematic of the covey, um, a dress that she chooses to wear to the reaping, which... I also really love that in the sea of gray, she's chosen to wear this dress. One might even wonder, does she know that she will be reaped, that she will be in this dress uh, for the games, and what does that choice mean? And so, you know, bringing her to life was like an all-hands-on-deck effort between her immense talents, Francis as a director, and then our amazing team that helped to make the look of her and make her look both kind of timeless, I think, but also very very specific and um, believable um, for the world of, of our world building. 
Absolutely. And everything that you just uh, discussed, um, one of my favorite scenes, I won't give it away, but you'll know um, the, the District 12, you know, the, the, the music, everything, the vibration. I mean, you, you can't help but like want to tap your foot. Um, and just one more question. Uh, what's it been like collaborating with uh, Francis Lauren? Well, you know, it's been a true joy. I mean, we had an incredible time making the other movies together, The you know, from Catching Fire on. Um, and, and and he is an incredible partner. He is a remarkable, as a, as a director, you know, you want somebody who has a vision, knows what they want, but what Francis has is that vision plus this incredible kind of curiosity, receptivity, the confidence to want to truly collaborate. And whether that's in his collaboration with Suzanne or myself, with his department heads, um, the way that um, it, it takes a very confident person to actually be receptive and open and still know what you want, but to be able to make the most of the people's talents around you. And so for me to get to come back to do this with Francis, he spoils me. He really, he makes a lot of other um, directors um, feel like, boy, they're not, they, because he, it's hard for somebody to have the warmth, the inclusive the inclusivity, like say, and you can have people who you like a lot, but the partnership is um, rarely as robust as it is with him. Yeah, I love uh, in a lot of your other interviews, just how you speak of, speak of him and how inclusive he is. So uh, wonderful, Nina, thank you so much. And oh. looking forward to chatting again soon. Thank you, I'm really glad you liked it.